Hi and welcome to the Groove Monkey instructional video on using the free MIDI beats available on the website with Ableton Live. So you can access the free beats with this free MIDI link here. And you can see on this page we have four choices. Don't worry about these bottom two at the moment, we just want the one according to your platform. So I'm on Mac, so I'm just going to click on that one there. So once this package downloads, then in this case with Safari on Mac, it will automatically open as a folder that looks like this. Don't worry about this installer to the left. What we want is this folder here on the right, other MIDI mappings. And once you open that, we see this list here of different options. The one we want is Live SD. Now SD stands for Session Drums. That's an add-on pack that you can get with Ableton Live. If you've just got the basic version of Live, then you have to buy it as an extra add-on. Or if you've got the Live Suite boxed version, then Session Drums comes with it. Now, even though it's for the Session Drums technically, it will work with most of the other drum racks as well. It's just what you might find, as we'll see in a moment, that some of the drum racks don't have as many sounds loaded into them as the Session Drums do. Uh, but we'll look at how to deal with that when we get to it. Now, it's worth also copying across the GM mapped folder because in some cases, possibly with the percussion, uh, such as world beats, things like that, the live SD may not work and it may be worth trying the GM mapped version. But for now, we're just going to copy them over. I'm not going to drag and drop because I want to show you where I put them. So I'm just going to do Command C to copy or Control C on PC. And what I've done is created a GrooveMonkey folder, and I've put that in this music folder in Finder. I'm not entirely sure what the equivalent is on Windows. I think there's a My Music folder, or at least there used to be. But it really doesn't matter anyway. It's just wherever you will remember it. So I just found in that music folder, which is inside the Home folder, which is the one with your username, I've just created a GrooveMonkey folder, and I'm going to paste them in there. So now if we open Ableton Live, the basic install includes a blank audio track and a blank MIDI track, just like this. Basically what we want to do is use these three folder icons here. They're a lot like the Mac Finder or the Windows Explorer where you can just go through the folders on your hard drive and find things. So you can see this is open to the home folder and there's that music folder and there's the GrooveMonkey folder there. So what I'm going to do is bookmark that folder. You can do that by clicking here. Uh, it looks like I've already done it there. That means that if I now select that, it will go straight to that folder. And you do that by using this option here. At the moment it says remove current folder from bookmarks. But if I click on that again, it'll say bookmark current folder. You can see it's gone because I removed it. So that's how you bookmark it so that you can easily jump to it later on. In any case, you'll always have these folders available, which includes the desktop, all volumes, which shows the hard drive separately, and that home folder as well as the Ableton Live library there. So once we've done that, I'm just going to open that folder and you can see they're all organized according to the different packs, which are genre related. Now this free MIDI pack is a selection of all the different packs. So when we open one of them, we'll find that it's just kind of one of each style. Whereas when you get the actual packs, each one of these will have a number of different grooves for each style. So the way this naming works is the first number here is the tempo that corresponds to this global tempo up here in live that means that anything that's got that tempo on it will uh, sound as it did when it was originally created when it's at that tempo in other words this example here was created at 65 bpm so if you then play it at 130 then it'll be playing at twice the speed it was when it was created occasionally that might sound a bit weird you can experiment with that and see what you're happy with. Uh, really, there's no rules there, but it's just an indicator of what it was recorded at. Then following that, obviously, is the genre or style. So you've got a number of different styles there. And as I said in the packs, after that, you'll have a number for each groove. And then you'll have, in a lot of them, you'll see here that it's got a letter as well, like C. And that gives you different variations on those grooves. And then after that, you might have fill, which indicates that it's a fill. Or you might have how many bars it goes for in the title like that. So they're just indicators of the tempo, the genre, the different variations, and whether it's a fill or, and so on. So I'm just going to pick a couple that are kind of close to this global tempo, either 130 or 135, just to give you an example. Now, you'll see each one has got its own play button here. 
in the session view in Ableton Live. Now, if you weren't seeing this view to begin with, and you were seeing this view here, then that's the arrangement view, and the other one is the session view. I'm pressing the tab key to switch between those, but you can also use these buttons here. Now, that's kind of instrumental to the way Ableton Live works in contrast to other programs. Most other programs have a more linear style arranger like this, where you arrange your clips according to the beats and bars and time along the bottom here. So that allows you to arrange your song. But the session view allows us to kind of jam it on the fly, and we do that by pressing these play buttons on each of the clips. So if you hit the play button there, you can see there's some information coming through the mixer there, but we're not hearing anything. And the reason for that is because if we double click on that clip, you can see all it is is a bunch of MIDI notes. It's like you're playing on a keyboard, but that keyboard's not turned on because there's no instrument for the notes to play. So what we need to do is choose an instrument from the devices browser here. Just double click on that and you can see there's an instruments folder. If we open that, you can see there's drum rack here. Now, just by double clicking on that, I've created a blank drum rack, which is not actually what I wanted to do. I wanted to open that folder and have a look in the kit folder here. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to use the 808 Classic Kit. So I'll just drag that on top of this drum rack here. Not onto one of the pads there because that would just load it onto that pad. You could also have dragged that just onto the MIDI track itself. You can even double click it, but sometimes that will actually create a new MIDI track. And as I've already put the clips here, I just want to make sure it goes on that track. So now that we've chosen that, you can preview each of the sounds by clicking on their own little preview buttons there. And when I hit play on the clip, it'll play those grooves. Now, we can jam through as much as we like, so you could drag a whole bunch of clips down there and just change it up on the fly. If you want to then start actually arranging it like a song, then that's where you need the arrangement view. So you can either select them all and grab them and then press the tab key and just lay it out on the track there in the arrangement view. Or you can command C or control C to copy and then paste it like that. And what you can do then is you can move them wherever you like on the timeline. So you can decide I want this clip to start on bar 13. And this one I want to start on bar 9. And this one I want at the start. So what you can do is just drag the end out. And provided loop is turned on inside the clip. So if I double click on that clip again, you can see down here we've got this loop button. If I turn that off, you can see it doesn't allow you to copy it like that. Whereas if it's on, I can drag it out. And most of these have it on by default. And that makes it nice and easy to have that loop repeat until the next section. You can, of course, just copy and paste. Or you can even Command D or Control D to duplicate, and it'll basically do the same thing, but with one key press. But in a lot of cases, the loop function is easiest. Having a look in the clips themselves, you can see where all the notes are laid out. So if you wanted to change any of these sounds, for example, if we wanted to change the hi-hat, for example, to maybe maracas, I'll just go back to one loop so the whole thing changes then you can click on the key and then you can drag it. Likewise, you could just select one if you want. And if you don't want to hear it each time, you can turn that preview button off. In fact, I think it's off by default. I just turned it on earlier. And then you won't hear it every time you drag it. So if we play that clip, now at the moment you'll notice that it's faded out and we're not actually hearing that change. The reason for that is because both the session view and the arrangement view shares the same mixer. So as this clip plays and creates a sound from the instrument, it comes out of this mixer and the two can't go through the same mixer at the same time. So you have to choose one or the other. And whenever you've pressed play on a clip in the session view or the stop buttons has the same effect, then it overrides whatever's going on in the arrangement view and then it fades out like you can see here. The way to change that is to press this button here, which is the Back to Arrangement button. Now that'll be lit up if it's been overridden. And if you then turn that off so it's no longer lit up, then we can hear what's going on in the arrangement view. So you can hear now the maracas are playing instead of the hi-hats. I'm going to put them back to the hi-hats. One other quick thing that I need to mention is you might notice that in this example, 
In fact, I'll use this clip because it illustrates it a little better. You'll notice that there's two here that don't have names. They just have the notes, C3 and C sharp 3, and they're not actually playing anything. If we play those clips, in fact, I'll do it in the session view. If you have a look, you can switch between the track view and the clip view. In the track view, if we scroll up, you can actually see that the C3 and C sharp 3 are receiving notes, but they're not playing anything because there's no sounds on those notes. Now that's just because this drum rack isn't full up. There's only so many sounds on it, and there just happens to be no sounds on those notes. The easiest way to do something about that is to actually just select them and move them to something that does have notes on it. And of course you can move it to whatever you like. You could also undo that and go back to track view and just move those congas over. The benefits of doing it this way are that you don't need to then change every clip. So if you've already laid out a bunch of clips, it might be quicker to change it on here. Now this is an example of where I said that these clips are really designed for the session drums. And so in the session drums equivalent, you might find that there's sounds on all of those slots. Whereas in these kits that have come with the Drum Machines bundle or any of the others that come with Ableton Live, they might not line up so easily. But in most cases, you can hear that the groove is still mostly there. There just might be one or two notes that don't have sounds there. So that's pretty much it. If you want to learn more about Ableton Live, then you can check out my videos at www.groove3.com where I go into quite a lot of detail about how to use Ableton Live. Okay, thanks for watching.